So, uh, yeah, that caused some issues. You know what's so funny? Is that like, I, had a, I had a similar experience to that, but it wasn't because I was raging, but the TO definitely thought I was. Like, I lost, like, a close-ass set, and it was, like, game five, and I, like, went for the fist bump and everything, and I knocked my knee on the table, <laughs> and the TO looks at me, he's like, hey, you know, <laughs> you know, they get, like, to try and, like, get me, like, back to my senses, and I'm like, wait, yo, no, chill, I, like, knocked it completely on accident. It was so funny, the TO thought that I was actually good. But, uh, here we uh -oh. go. Oh my goodness, imagine. <laughs> imagine almost dying at zero. Yeah, I would have rated that. I would have died to that, but uh, here we are. Uh, winner's quarterfinals on this other end. We have a Frost versus Seabag getting started right now. And it is off to one heck of a start. Yeah, Frost making an explosive first doctor on Seabag. Uh, only 18% sustained. I think Snake's got the worst disadvantage state of any top 10 character. Yeah. Kinda crazy how they're still top 10 with such an insanely bad disadvantage. But here goes Seabass going for an offstage uh -oh. spike, but is enough to spook Frost out of the entirety of the stock, and only 1% deficit is uh, on Seabass' end right now. That was definitely a miscue from Frost, but they're doing a good job of holding down the uh, landing zone, not letting Frost, or sorry, excuse me, not letting Seabass get a foot back on stage uncontested. That's true. I Here definitely think uh, that that falling up air, hitting the C4, or excuse me, the grenade rather, was meant to actually deter Seabass from hitting. And yep, there it is, the jab, but not going for the Jair, instead opting to uh, punish him with F smash. Frost is all over mm. Seabass' game. That's what I'm seeing here as well. Great stuff here so far from him. But now we have Seabass on the last stop for this game. Uh, trying to go for a couple of setups, but as you can see, Frosty's are more than content to just wait it out. Uh, wait for him to finish up so he can get his punch back in there. Yeah, but hey, these grenades are, are really making it difficult uh, for Frost to, you know, maintain uh, this this pressure uncontested. Uh, so right. that's putting a lot of damage back on, and there's an up tilt to take that stock early. Yeah, and despite all this aggro and great gameplay coming out from Frost, he's only up 42% of his last stock, and look at that, that down here alone. Just about tied up the game. Goes for the astronauts. Isn't quite going to be able to get it. And now this last stop for the both these two players in the first game is uh, starting to heat up quite a bit. What did you say? Oh yeah. Uh, I mean, now we see Frost at a pretty big deficit. Um, you know, I mean, they still have a little bit of a lead, but right now it definitely seems like Seabass is getting what they want to come out, whereas Frost is not able to do so. Yeah, I'm agreeing with that here because um, it does seem to be a little bit of an issue, but now. Going off stage for the side being the key to edge guard isn't quite going to be able to get it just yet. And uh, Frost is going to find himself back on stage at 139% deficit. The down B read is coming out from Seabass. And look at that, he even got the out tilt for insurance. This is going to be a quite enough. I think Seabass, uh, right at the end of that match there, used the explosion of the grenade at center stage, uh, like the smoke from it, to hide him placing the C4. You see that? Yeah, very subtle. Very subtle there. And uh, it's definitely something that is uh, going to be important for Frosty King to know that he even caught it at all. Like you said, it was very uh, blinking or missing thing, but uh, Frosty's definitely not one to miss a lot of uh, things, if you know what I mean. Definitely he's very good at catching on to a lot of uh, gameplay styles and uh, little quirks to his characteristics with characters. Um, and applies it very well. I mean, that's kind of what allows Frost to uh, perform at this level. It's just um, either that or just knowing how to rush down extremely well. In the meantime, we see Seabass going for a bit of a rush down option, going for a really early KO uh, with that forwarder, like we saw there, but uh, not thinking to be able to take it just yet. Uh, with this Town and City pick should be pretty good for Frost on this second game. These constant grenade pulls from Seabass are super impressive. Uh, you know, no matter where they are, they can hit a Z drop, uh, you know, with it. Uh, they can pull another one out and have it drop immediately. I mean, this movement is, is super good. Uh, and and, and, and really laying down the uh, Tropic Thunder uh, and making sure Seabass can't approach, or excuse me, uh, Frost can't approach if they want to. That is definitely true here. And we have Seabass getting back onto this uh, top platform here. On the right side, is going to be going for. A, was trying to kind of look for an option to get in, but it looks like Frost was more ready to catch it as you saw there. Uh, he finished it off with the back here to close out the first stock, and at 92%, though, uh, Seabass does have a couple of options available to him to tie up this game. I think this counter pick, uh, you know, allowing Frost to go here was a pretty bad idea uh, because Robin, Prom and Roy definitely uh, kill on this stage a lot earlier than most other stages. Yeah, they got a lot off of this pick for sure. 
Yeah, where a snake likes to kill off the top, uh, and you know the stage gets rather low on the stage. Um, you know, or, or, or in, in the box rather. Uh, so that ceiling's a lot higher up than it usually is. Right, and for that reason, we're probably going to be seeing uh, Frost go for an option like that pretty soon here. Uh, but at 153%, again, I'm not too sure how much longer uh, Frost can hold on for it, though. I gotta say, at 153, still hold on to three stocks is pretty impressive. Yeah, but, you know, Seabass looking to go to Ooh, another deficit of a stock. Yep, three to one right now, and I think Frost is looking for some cheese right now. I think he might be looking for the uh, ether to take, take that stock early, but... Uh, you know, Seabass is now the one who's going to be playing the harder game because a lot of Snake's kit really utilizes the fact that Snake is so heavy and those right. grenades are such good combo breaker options that um, Snake uses them to, to trade with their opponents and ultimately win the damage war. But now in this position, Snake has to play a lot more safe uh, as, as this damage adds up on this last stock. It can get very dangerous very quickly. It most definitely does so. But right now we're going to be seeing a jump B going to be combining together to put Seabass at 136%. Uh, but there's that grenade, or I think that was a C4 actually that I connected. But now an up smash is going to be closing out the second stock and tying up the stock count with Dang. That percent deficit is going to be a huge one for Seabass to have to make up for if he does plan to uh, potentially close it out in 2-0. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's going to be a uh, pretty dang hard to pull off. Seabass with really good awareness to avoid uh, all the pressure from those back airs that Frost is doing. But, right at the end, yeah, you faltered a little bit in the defensive department, uh, opting to recover high uh, from the ledge. And, uh, yeah, that's going to get picked up immediately by Frost, and he's going to be there for the kill with that up air. That's uh, right, really solid finisher there from Frost. Um, but,. Given that uh, the first game was going to be won by Seabest, there is still one more match that we got to play out. Smashville, I got to say, is definitely one of the better stages in the state, I feel like. Um, especially like when you count for like C4, because uh, C4 can hit you like through the platform. And, you know, being able to play C4... Yeah, so those like, grenades, actually. Right, those grenades and the C4 uh, are going to be very potent on that top platform there. A lot of use that you can get out of it uh, on this stage, so it's going to be a great kind of thing for Seabass. But right now, we're not going to get too much of an opportunity to place explosives as uh, Ross is kind of going in on this uh, first stock here so far. And, you know, it's going to be a war of attrition going forward uh, for both these guys. I think the winner is going to be the one who has more stage control uh, for longer and is able to maintain it. That's right, and so far it does seem like uh, Seabass is doing a pretty good job of keeping up with Frost, uh, even making percent, making up for some of the uh, uh, neutral loss by uh, getting those grenades to punish the aerials, for instance. Um, I do think it's kind of interesting. Oh, good use of the down B, though. I was going to say, uh, it's kind of interesting that the grenades are still able to explode despite you know, being a health item. But either way, CMS is making use of every single part of the moves that you saw there. But Frost, getting a good punish option is going to be tying the game right back up here. Yeah, he recognized that uh, Seabass was going to be wanting to close the distance with that dash attack. That's normally super hard to punish, but Frost put himself at a distance that Seabass would have to undershoot that uh, in order for the F smash to connect. And hey, Frost did a good job of recognizing that, taking that stock in the process. Yeah, really great job doing so. He's getting a little bit of a screen off of uh, Seabass's own explosion. And uh, Frost is definitely one to take advantage of every situation wow. that's presented to him. Excellent use! of punishing the Aether with the grenade held on the shield and falling up with the back air. There is all kinds of smart plays coming at you from Seabass, and this two-stock lead might not be a lead for so much longer if he keeps it up. I am constantly impressed by how Seabass is cooking, dropping, picking up, and then throwing the grenades, um, you know, and, and, and pulling out new ones post-haste, like, like, just immediately, and uh, constantly mixing up what they want to do with them uh, so that Frost has to think twice before they approach. Right, and now we do have uh, Seabass up a stock at the moment, but at 120 he's going to be sustaining an Aether full on here for Frost, uh, who's now sitting on a potential winner's stock here. Seabass is doing a great job throughout this set. Uh, he's kind of taking advantage of a lot of the stuff that would normally be for Frost's benefit. 
go. I actually used the F tilt though. Yeah, the unfortunate whiff of that up smash uh, led to Frost being able to capitalize and take that stock. Frost definitely not out of this just yet. Uh, and yeah, that 23% off of one uppy is definitely going to be good for putting Frost back in this match. That's right, that's going to be very important for Frost right now. I doubt that they're trying to go into losers as soon as uh, quarterfinals. Especially in a tournament like this where we mentioned Whoa! Strutter's not going to be present, but okay. instead, we're going to get one of the... Uh, Best shakeups of the night in terms of practice results and Seabass is going to be taking a 2-1 over Frost.